Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again and I'm glad you joined me here in my shop and let's discuss something today that is really a difficult thing to do in any shop and that is to drill accurate holes and uh, accurately spaced holes, that is exactly an inch apart or exactly three quarters of an inch apart. It's just very difficult to do that, especially for uh, newbies. Now sometimes it's not all that critical and it just doesn't matter, just lay it out with a a ruler and that's good enough, but there are other times when you want it to be within a thousandth or so, or even less, or in other words you want perfection. So I'm going to show you different ways of doing it. Some are the old school ways, and I know they're not accurate, but I just want to compare. So there's six different methods here that I'm going to uh, demonstrate and then compare the results. And this is going to be a rather long video, it may be two parts. So. Hang in there with me. Now here's a sample. I was experimenting and uh, rehearsing, if you will. I do a lot of rehearsing, believe it or not. But what I'm going to do here is use hardened dowel pins, and I'm going to ream holes, drill and then ream holes, and then I can get a very accurate measurement here across the two. And for instance, these holes here are drilled on three-quarter center, and because these are quarter-inch diameter, hardened dowel pins, the reading should be one inch, and it is. I'm just a little bit over. Uh, I'm a half a thousandth over, and I'll tell you why here in a second. But years ago, the only way to do that, I'm talking about before digital readout, and before transistors, and before uh, numerical control, and computer numerical control, it could only be done to that degree of accuracy on a machine called a jig borer. I'm not even sure that they use them anymore, but they used a, a system of dial indicators and very accurate rods of different lengths to locate the work. And I don't really want to talk about that, and you probably don't want to listen, but let me show you the, the different methods that I'm going to use today. Well, method number one is just a simple layout using a ruler and a combination square and a center punch, all the standard layout tools. Number two is layout with a height gauge and then using a prick punch, trying to get them as accurately as humanly possible, at least for tubal cane. Three, I'm going to use that Skidmore optical center punch and see how close that is. Four, I'm going to do a direct layout, that is, there will be no layout. I'm just going to drill holes on the bridge port using the dials. That's the way it was done. Either that or vernier scale on an index mill when I was uh, serving my apprenticeship. Uh, so there's no layout. We're just going to drill and locate them by moving the table and reading the dials. Number five, using the digital readout. And number six, I'm going back to the drill press and I'm going to use the Atlas Compound Drill Vise. I may have never used this in a demonstration. I showed it when I first bought it, so we'll, we'll talk about that when we get around to it. But those are the six methods. The holes will be drilled one size under quarter inch and then reamed one-fourth, and then the dowel pins can be driven or pressed in place. I think you all know what dowel pins are and I'll be using quarter inch by one inch, and remember that all dowel pins in this size are two thousandths over the listed diameter. That way they will press into a hole that is reamed one quarter. So that, uh, I'm not going to take that into account in what I'm doing here, but you may see a little fluctuation because of that, and that's what you just showed you, what I just showed you here a minute ago. And secondly, I started out here and I was going to use hot roll seal simply because I have a lot of it. But then I found out that using the optical center punch, uh, the hot roll scale starts to peel off and it's very hard to read. And you couple that with putting layout dye on there and you can even see here how it flakes off and it's very inaccurate, so I'm going to use cold roll steel. These are just drop-offs that I got. I'm not going to put uh, layout dye on it because that tends to flake off too if your work isn't, even though it says it won't flake off, it does. So, all right, that's enough of an introduction. Let's get started with the simple method. This is method number one, just using a combination square and I'm just going to arbitrarily draw a line across here using Randy's 
Oh boy, my hands, they look like King Tut's. The Lufkin Square is set for one inch. And boy, there's a lot of burrs. I didn't take the time to deburr this stock. And now I will measure three quarters of an inch from that, so I'll set the combination square for one and three quarters. And this is the method that many of you probably use for your layouts. Now I will center punch. I'm going to use the stair punch. You may not do this, but I generally, after I use the automatic center punch, use a a stair at center punch to deepen it a little bit, uh, foolish as it may be. Now, am I going to use the little Cameron micro drill to spot these? Absolutely not, because most of you do not have one, and this is just rough work, the way you might do it laying out a bracket or something like that. I will be using this in uh, one of the upcoming ones, but, but not for this, because this is just to see how close it is when I'm working rather crudely. Now I'm going to the drill press, any old drill press, big drill, you know, sensitive drill press, and I'm going to spot this with a spotting drill. No, I won't use a spotting drill. I'm going to use a pilot drill of perhaps uh, one eighth and then drill one size under quarter and rim it. Eighth inch pilot. Now this is a 15 64th drill bit, and I'm going to drill out these two that are eighth, but the other two I'm going to drill without benefit of a pilot. See if it makes any difference. Perhaps I've wasted thousands of hours in my life going through these extra steps. I know I'm going to take a beating on this. I drill those holes without benefit of a drill press vise, but in the smaller sizes, I feel, with my experience, I can handle it and the work's not going to get away. I recommend you use a vise. But a vise and your work being held rigidly can prevent it from floating and you can lose some accuracy. You may disagree with that, but here is a quarter inch reamer. I'm over on the Walker Turner drill press with my new DC speed control so I can slow it way down and I'm going to use a little oil and real quickly drill these out. Or ream them out rather. All right, with the drums rolling, anyone want to take bets? I'm thinking that I am within ten thousandths. I'm just guessing. I haven't measured yet. No, I'm seventeen thousandths off on those two. Over here, I am uh, only seven thousandths off. So you can see it varies depending on uh, my eyesight or the movement of my hands or the shadows or my shaking or whatever. So you can see that for many purposes that's close enough. In review I'm 17 thousandths off, that's about a 64th off. I'm a little surprised at the difference that we have a, a different error on each one. I did not expect them to be right on, that would have just been a fluke if it was. So, all right. And as I said, this is good enough a lot of times. Most of the time, this is good enough, you know, depending on your job. All right, let's go on to number two, which will be a layout with the uh, 
with the height gauge. See how that does. Backing up to number one, remember I used an eighth inch pilot on these two and it's actually worse than this so it had nothing to do with the price of fish. Okay I'm using the Mitutoyo and I calibrated this to make sure the scriber really comes down to the uh, surface plate here. It's set for one inch and I want deep scribe lines here because I want to I want them to be grooves you'll see why. That's why I'm scribing it over and over. Now one and three quarter. And of course these two lines do not need to be accurate at all, but I want them to be scribed deeply as well. I have described this method many times. Visualize these scribe lines actually as grooves or furrows. So taking a prick punch, which is simply a punch sharpened to a very acute angle, and I'm either pushing it or pulling it along one line, I'm in the furrow, until I feel it, you, you will literally feel it when it hits the uh, perpendicular line. And at that point, I raise the punch up and mark it. Now I'll do the other three similarly. And now I will pilot drill all four holes with an eighth inch bit again. Forgive me for not using a vise. And now I will drill all four of them, 1564. I won't show all of that. And now I will ream all four holes. I won't show all of that. And I won't show any more of driving the dowel pins in, but let's measure number two and see how it comes out. All right, height gauge. Now make sure you always wipe out the jaws and that it zeroes out. Seems like I could really count on this Shars one. It does a good job. Anyway, right here, oh my, I'm within a thousandth. And that was not using a digital readout. What about the other ones here? And that one is within well I'm going to call it uh, two thousandths. Maybe t Remember I'm not taking into account that uh, oversized uh, dowel pins, but let, let's call this one uh, three thousandths off, and this one is uh, well. That's one. Let's call it one thousandths off. But isn't that's really close? Now that shows you the value of that method of following the furrow. And my brother, who is now in a nursing home, extended care facility, showed me that method years ago before we had height gauges or any of these other neat tools. And he used to do a lot of uh, tool making and, and that type of work where it needed to be real accurate. So this is an extremely accurate me method. I expected it to be. I didn't want to brag or say anything before I started it, but I expected this to be very close. So I'll put those uh, amounts there. What was it? One thousandth and, and three thousandths off. I'll mark that. Alright, this is number three. 
Never mind that. That's something I did a long time ago on, on scrap. <laughs> I was using that uh, etcher that came from Westlocks <laughs> a year ago, but never mind that. Uh, all right, I laid this out already. You didn't need to see me lay out because it was identical to the last one with the Mitutoyo. And I'm going to use the Skidmore Optical Center Punch. And other companies make these also. These are kind of expensive. I haven't used this a lot. But it consists of, I think you know, a little magnet. Stick to the work. And then the eyepiece itself. Boy, that's hard to get out of there. And there are crosshairs in there, just like your weaver scope. And it's not going to show up. I do not have the ability to film that. It's a nice... Oh, you can see the crosshairs, can't you? From this side. So it's, that's all you're going to see, too. So that will fit in there. It's just a nice fit. And it needs to be brought up and down until it gets into focus. And it helps a lot. Well, matter of fact, for me, I have to use a, a light from the side. And that really is what this little translucent uh, part is all about. But I will slide that around until my weaver scope is right on the killer spot for that elk. Pull the eyepiece out carefully without moving the magnet. Inserting the center punch, which also is a very nice fit. And then tapping it with uh, the three monkeys hammer. Now, I know you couldn't see that and that my head was in the way, but you get the idea. And it looks dead on, doesn't it? And I'll do the other three and see you in one minute. I have long been a fan of this Cameron micro drill. I just love it. I now have two of them, so actually I can drill two holes at one time if I'm in the mood. But I have to get a belt for the other one. And I haven't talked about the other one. That will be the subject of another video. But I use a 1 16th inch bit or smaller in the Albrecht chuck, which alone would be $400 if you had to buy it. So I understand nobody has these. And I, I'm... But I like to use it, and the whole idea is that when I turn it on, I'm just going to spot these. I'm not going to drill all the way through. I would break the bit. I know I would. Now I've got to put these back on. So I will spot all four of them just an eighth of an inch deep or less. Then I'm going over to the other drill press and I'm going to drill them out uh, whatever size that was, 15, 64, and I will ream them. And I'm going to do that all off camera because you've seen me do that enough already. But I've used this method a lot also in conjunction with the, the method in, uh, in number two, depending on how accurately you want to work. Okay, this one is done. I do not expect it to be perfect for three reasons. Number one, there's a bit of a learning curve to using this. Number two, I believe that as I use this, there's some parallax error, if I'm using the term correctly. And number three, and worse, I'm a 75-year-old man looking through cataracts the size of a carp scale. So I just do not have good vision anymore. So let's see what happened here. Quit talking, you're thinking. So that's, well, see that's, what, that's 11 thousandths off. I could have done better with a combination square. This side is a, a 5 thousandths off. So this was not good at all. I'm blaming myself. I believe that the uh, the layout was accurate. It wasn't the layout. It would have been the use of this or the possibly the misuse. I've used this very seldom in my life. I'm going to go ahead and mark those amounts down on here. But I would say this was not successful. 
Well, I measured again, and I'm going to call this one a 10 under. And this one a 5 under. And since the video is running long, I'm going to cut it off right here. I'm halfway through. I've done three parts. So join me in the next video, the next part of this video, for the final three. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now. I hope you are enjoying the video so far.